Hey, how do you buy something that nobody owns? And this is ES Einsteinium. In the old days of Empire, you could claim land by sticking your flag in the ground and then you could keep it if you had the manpower to defend it. For example, the French used to own Vietnam, but they didn't have the manpower to defend it and so they lost it. By this idea, the Russians have a flag in the North Pole, so they own the North Pole. And the Americans have a flag in the moon, so they own the moon. But they don't. Not yet, anyway. The Apollo Lunar Landing Legacy Act, which is an act that aims to turn parts of the moon into a national park, means that all the Apollo mission sites are protected from all the tourists. Well, they will be protected anyway. However, the Outer Space Treaty, which is the basics for the international space law since 1967, claims that nobody can own an extraterrestrial property. So a house on the moon? Not gonna happen. But if people put colonies on Mars, and that's a big if, this claims that you can't own the land that your house is built on. But the law uses specific language, and you could own a piece of land on Mars depending on whether you class Mars as a celestial body. The definition of this from Google is a natural object visible in the sky. But how far can you take this? Nearly everything in the visible universe is visible from the sky. Which means nobody could own anything outside Earth. You could see it as only things that are always in the sky, such as the moon and the sun, possibly some stars that always appear in the night sky. So, if Mars doesn't count as a celestial body, we can own land there. So is it every country going to race to plant their flags in the ground on Mars, or are we going to work out some border system to stick to? The idea that you have to be able to defend your borders is a bit of a problem, as some countries on Earth can't defend their own borders, never mind ones on another planet. So if we assume borders are not an issue, just getting there is hard enough. The Mars One project will be opening their application process for the first colony on Mars. It's a one-way trip. The application itself says, Once on Mars, there is no means to return to Earth. Mars is home. A grounded, deep sense of purpose will help each astronaut maintain his or her psychological stability and focus as they work together towards a shared and better future. Mars One cannot stress enough of the importance of the application's capacity for self-reflection. So basically, you're going to be with the same few people for the rest of your life. And if you already hate the people you work with, this is probably not for you. But also, the topic of sex in space hasn't been covered. Could take up to two years to get to the red planet, and well, it's inevitable. Vsauce did a video on what would happen if you were born in space, and well, the results are not always good. Check that video out for more information on that. There are lots of issues that need to be addressed, and a lot of money which needs to come from somewhere. But I look forward to a bright future where, instead of taking a year out from school to travel the world, you take the rest of your life out and travel to Mars. I'm the Eccentric Scientist. Leave a comment on what you would like my next video to be on. Hit like if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe so you don't miss the next video. Bye!